Iranian protester tortured and sentenced to death for apostasy. Since, since the death and custody of Masa Amini, the Iranian government has been arresting and torturing many protesters. On January 3rd, the authorities handed three death sentences to Javad Ruhi, a 35-year-old mentally ill man, for allegedly committing apostasy, corruption on earth, and insulting holy things amidst the early stages of the protests that began in mid-September 2022. Javad Ruhi, along with two teenagers, Arsha uh, Takdastan and Mehdi Mohammed Fard, were accused of breaking into the traffic police headquarters in the city of Naushar in northern Iran and setting it on fire in late September. According to Amnesty International, Iranian authorities forced Ruhi to confess during his first days of imprisonment. Ruhi was tortured so severely in a detention center run by the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, or IRGC, that he could not talk, and, no, that he lost his ability to talk, walk, and control urination and defecation. He was also deprived the right to choose his lawyer to defend him. Human rights groups have report, reported that roughly 100 people are facing execution for their participation in the Iranian uprising. So this, like what happened and is happening to Javad, like just rips my heart out on so many different levels. So he was sentenced, he was handed three death sentences for three different charges, right? And what's been happening, what happens is that when you face trial in Iran, there is an extremely high probability that the court is going to reject the lawyer that you choose for yourself. And that they will appoint their own lawyer who will then basically play a part in a play called your trial that's just a complete fraud and sham, right? So he was denied the right to a lawyer of his choice. And he was appointed by one by the court. And the one appointed by the court said that there is even the one appointed by the court in this totally fake trial even him said that there is like no evidence for like any of the charges against him so he's been accused of like leading protests because they say that he directed people not to go into a building that was like on fire or something i don't know how that's directing a protest when you're saying don't go over there it's dangerous and then they accuse him in the, the these three people who are, you know, kind of, they were handed these set of charges. They were all accused of various forms of vandalizing, maybe throwing a Molotov cocktail or, or like all that stuff. And in the process of this, allegedly a Quran was burned. So that's where this like accusation of apostasy is coming from an insult to holy things. And even this man's court appointed lawyer that usually just plays buddy with the prosecutor to join up and get you in the most trouble possible. Even that guy is like, we don't have evidence for these things. But the Javad stood on the stand in his trial, which lasted only one hour, and told the judge to his face that he had been tortured to confess. And they they still used this information gathered under torture, under techniques that I cannot talk about on YouTube, but we know happened to him and still use that information against him. These are, by the way, these these court hearings are televised and you, you should, people, they're in Persian, but if you watch them, they are complete, they're kangaroo courts. Like they're, they're just handing out death sentences to people um, over, after one hour. After one, like, this is even bizarre, based, even based on the Iranian standards, because usually it takes like one or two years and there's an appeal process. 
but these people are just like going crazy with these death sentences. And if you watch the court, the entire thing, they, there's actually no evidence. Like they tell you what happened. You there is a defense usually the by a, a, a lawyer that is just helping the other side, the government side. Um, and it doesn't really matter what the lawyer said. You don't have access to a lawyer if you're choosing. And they don't ignore everything from the other side. And they just hand out the defenses. And and there's actually no evidence. Like sometimes they show you edited, cut out parts of videos. And like why, even in the court case, like why are you not showing the entire videos? What, why is this edited? Why is this just cut out? And what they show you is in no in the civilized world would not be ever counted as like evidence. They're like, oh, yeah, that's good enough. They just go by claims. Like, they're, guys, I'm not making this off. There's actually no evidence. They don't present evidences. There's just a claim. And then they, they hand out the death sentence. I don't even know why they are showing this because it's so embarrassing. Like, there's so many theories on, in, on by people. They were like, well, this is obviously horrible. This is even like Iranian lawyers and judges. This is not like horrible ba even based on American standards or European standards. This is even horrible based on Iranian standards. Like Iranian lawyers are watching this and I'm like, what is this? This is this is a joke. This is just making, are you making fun of your own justice system? Why And why are you showing this to us? This is embarrassing. This is not even... Like you, you can see the judge, the judge is not even acting like a judge. The judge is like just trying to gaslight the the defense and like they're not like constantly interrupting it. Like, tell us, you did this, didn't you? Like, you're like, are you the judge or are you like what are are you the what is the lawyer from the other side other than the prosecutor? The, the prosecutor, like you're the judge. Why are you talking to him like that? And then, like the guy is trying to explain to him, like no, I'm like cutting him, like this is not a court. And so the the theories are like, why are they showing this? Because this is, I think they didn't recognize that this is a horrible example of how a court proceeding is supposed to be. Uh, so what, like, I think they're bragging about how horrible it is because I think they know they're this, they are self aware enough to know that they're violating Iran's own own laws. Like for, for example. The idea of you having to be able to have access to a lawyer of your own choosing is is in is in Iran's laws, and they are not doing it. They're not following their own laws. The the whole the way that they do it, carrying out the court, it violates everything that they have there in their own constitution. So why are you televising this? Why are you showing this to the world? I think they're trying to scare people about how the theory is. Like, look, look how. Look how we treat people. So don't mm -hmm. cross us. Like this is how easily you could get a death sentence. There's no hope for you. I think that's. I, I, do you have a better theory for why no, they're Armin, televising? That so that's actually D is saying the same thing. They must think it is a deterrent for other protesters. This is exactly what is being reported. Specifically, with the case of actually in the show notes, I have um something that you can pull up for this because I want to highlight the two other. Um, men that were sentenced alongside Javad. Um, but they think that this set of sentences is specifically to send a message to the Mazandarani people. Because after Sistan and Baluchistan province, which has faced the highest number of deaths in the uprising in September, like, like a hugely disproportionate amount of deaths are from Sistan and Baluchistan. But Second to that is Mazandaran province. And so this is where these men are from. And so there's like sending a message to this province, like we're still coming after you too. Because everyone knows that they go and execute the Baluchis left, right, and center like it doesn't even mean a thing over the smallest of crimes. Like, the level of executions that the Baluchis face, whether it's for protest or just generalized crime, is so wildly disproportionate to their ethnic like um, proportion to the country that some people call it like a genocide. So like we know that 
just the Baluchis are valued so much less, right? But then after that is Mazandaran in terms of who has the highest death count. Be before you, somebody clips you, you mean by the government? Yes, by the Islamic Republic. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, Qasim is confirming that Mazandaran gave so many lives during the protests. Yeah. By the way, it's, but guys, you have to appreciate how much Susanna knows about this. Susanna knows not only the first pro during Iranian protests, not even what the first province in the number of deaths are, but also the second. Like, this is the level of detail that most Iranians, most Iranians, not just most Iranians, most Iranians who are even active in um, in all of this revolution in Iran are don't have as much information as Susanna has. So I'm very like, thank you so much for being this involved in all of this. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I learned some things from about the, the revolution from Susanna. And I'm yeah. Iranian. And I'm doing shows on <laughs> and I'm doing shows on, on, on the whole Iran situation every every week. Every day. And uh, yeah, every other day. And Susanna sometimes says things that are like, Oh, I actually didn't know that. Thank you. Wait, but can you pull up the thing, please? The thing. I, I gave um, you two things that I want to show two. for this segment. Yes, yes, bringing it up. Mm. Okay, beautiful. Thank you. So here you can see when Javad was sentenced, they also sentenced two other men, Arsha and um, Mehdi, for these crimes of uh, alleged vandalism. And they also implicated them in the deaths of five people or held them responsible for the deaths of five people. But oh, these five people were people that were killed by regime forces. Protesters killed by regime forces, these three men are being held accountable for. Um, and Arsha and Mehdi are both also, they're only 18 and 19 years old. And if you, Amnesty International has reported on the sheer level of abuse and mistreatment that they have faced in detention. I cannot describe, I can't, I can't talk about what they did to them in prison. I can't, I, YouTube will not allow me to talk about what happened to them, but it's horrific. And so all three of these young men are now being sent, have been sentenced to death for confessions rendered under severe torture. So we can help advocate for them by raising awareness about their cases. It's literally the best and one of the most important things that we can do because it is the best way that we can exert pressure on the regime. Um, and to that end, I have a bunch of the hashtags that you can use to raise awareness about this that I just posted in the cat in the chat. So hashtag do not execute, hashtag Arshia uh Takdastan, uh Mehdi Mohammifard, and hashtag uh Javad Ruhi. So please guys go raise awareness about these cases and what the regime has done to them because um it's like a level of torment that like i can barely fathom um but that was the main thing i wanted to talk about with the main story um a lot of people in our audience have been asking us to do a general iran update because we haven't done one in a few weeks now and um well armin before you pull that up i think a broad overview is that the large scale activity of protests ha in the streets has died down in most cities. We still see smaller protests here and there, um, but they've died down for a number of reasons. One, including how bad the weather conditions are. Two, also how bad the um, cost of living crisis is. Like people just l have to work so much to just survive. And there's also a gas shortage right now, which is making things even more severe in terms of the lengths people have to go to to provide for themselves. So like people need to eat, you know, people, the suffering is stark. And so they need to get that need met first. And um, that's totally respectable and reasonable. 
Um, we see most large scale activity of protests in Sunni majorities nowadays, in Sunni, Sunni majority areas nowadays. Um, most notable would still be um, in Zahedan and Baluchistan. There's still huge protests every Friday. Um, but that's probably the largest actual people on the street activity that we have been seeing lately. However, based on all this an analysis that I've seen and read, there is nothing about this that should be misconstrued as the resistance revolution uprising is over. Like, I would not characterize that in any way, shape, or form. It's merely, like, um, retreated for the moment to fulfill, like, basic needs. And most analysts that I have follow are predicting that when weather conditions or just conditions in general change, we will see um, large scale activity come up once again. Um, and I wanted to say all this because I think it's really important that we, I can't think of a better way to say this, but for lack of a better term, I think it's important that we set our expectations appropriately because I've seen people talking really confidently as if the revolution will be over and there'll be a new government by Nauru's. <laughs> um, and that, I think sets people up for disappointment and a feeling of failure when there's nothing about the lessons learned and the new norm that has been created over the past several months that could be in any way construed as a failure. Like it really is groundbreaking and paradigm shifting. And so we might not see, you know, these large scale displays of public resistance that get that attention and seem so visceral and, you know, exciting, but, um, it, it's, it's still very, um, important to remember that most revolutions in history take months, years, not months. They take years, not months. And so based on my research, I believe that we should be supporting a long-term protracted low-level resistance because even a low level of resistance has the ability to constrain the resources of the regime. And um, that will also hopefully preserve life to the best ability. Um, and to that end, yeah. us on the outside need to pay attention to those who are going to continue to face consequences for actions they've taken over the past several months, like the men that we highlighted today. Um, so now that I got that out of my system, we need to talk about something big that happened like yesterday. Yes. So someone's attacking Iran. Um, like, like by attack, I mean like military attacks, like do you want to, should we, should we just show the video or? So okay, but saying, you need to translate because the way you translated it yesterday made me laugh so hard. So somebody is, there, there are explosions happening in Iran in the, in the past yeah, couple of hours, right? Like this has happened in less than 24 hours ago, right? Basically. And there's just drones um exploding things in multiple parts of iran and I, again i just i just ha took a nap so i don't know what are the recent updates but i heard somebody saying that israel took responsibility for this they didn't take responsibility the wa the wall okay. street journal has reported that israel is responsible but okay. they haven't claimed responsibility yet <laughs> yeah because they don't they don't usually do that last time i was saying go go Mossad. yeah exactly but we're gonna watch a video of somebody. So let me actually. I'm gonna before I'm gonna translate it to you before I play it. So the guy is just recording. Like apparently there's a drone up there, and he's saying that in an Isfahani accent, which makes it perfect, right? And then right he says like, we said like we don't know what it is. And right when he says that, it goes boom, explodes. And then he's like, oh my god. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know what is it with this guy, but he says the entire thing in the most monotone way, which makes the whole thing a lot more uh, comedic. By the way, these attacks are being done so perfectly because they're only on military sides. I think warfare is getting a lot is going in the right direction because it's now more possible to take out 
military targets with with very little civilian collateral damage, which is perfect, which I love. Yes, I am all for it. I hope everybody within the Iranian regime feels unsafe without the civilians feeling unsafe. But this is exactly what we want to see more of. Um, so I said, saying, no, 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 we don't want war. No, this is the type. This is the type of war that I completely endorse because this is like taking out targeted take taking out of military facilities, right? So this is beautiful. This video is beautiful. It's just recording it, and the guy is like, so there is a drone right up there, and it goes boom, and it's like, oh my god. <laughs> 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 so watch that with the that explosion time. shocked me i yelled i was like holy shit. okay go ahead go ahead all right well, watch this watch this we don't have audio okay let me know if you have audio oh, <laughs> یه پا یه پاوات بود درسته یه پاوات So again he says like so I don't know what's happening apparently there's a drone there and then it goes like boom I like oh my god it was a drone wasn't it it was a drone yes. <laughs> Yeah yeah wait can you guys did you guys hear that just one more time like just keep that translation in mind while you're watching it اما تو یه پا دا فهمدم پا با چند این دونم چی یه پا با آد بود درسته یه پا با آده Oh my god, right when he says like it's I don't know what it is and it goes right when he says that it goes boom <laughs> Is, when I first uh, showed you this, you started falling over laughing, and you're like, wait, Susanna, you don't understand this translation makes it so comedic. Mm. Guys, did you guys hear the entire idea? That was perfect. Um, yeah, so yeah, uh, Qasem is saying, yeah, precisely targeted. War. Yeah, uh, exactly. That's that's what we want to see. Very, very targeted. Um, wait, I, I, showed, I showed you a video of what people sent me about what this what type of weaponry this could be um again i don't know oh, much yeah. about military warfare should i show people that video about this is the future of warfare um i don't know i mean we definitely shouldn't watch the whole thing whoa we could hear that yeah let me do you guys want me to show you what it's like So it could be well, stuff like that. This is all like in the animation. Yeah, yeah, I know, but this is a demonstration of the future of warfare when it comes to drones like this, right? So look at how, look at how small this thing is. Was it too loud, or is it fine? It's a little bit loud. Look, just taking out boom, 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 boom. That's what it is. These are what they could be like. Hey, wait, but Armin, I want to ask you more questions about the consequences. All right, I'm just going to put this on mute while you ask me, but go on. So, um, well, there, I've seen a lot of different reactions of this. Some people are celebrating, and then there are some people who are like, people who are celebrating this, it's inappropriate because you guys are probably overseas and you have nothing to fear. Da, da, da. What's your reaction to that? Wait, what do you mean? There's a lot of people in the Iranian community that are like stressed out about this. And then um, they, they think that people who are like, yeah, IRGC terrorists suck it. Da, da, da. It's like they, they, they're they freaked out. They think it's inappropriate. Well, I think their reaction is unjustified given that um, they are not, cons they are the ones who are being inconsiderate. Okay. Because a lot more of people's lives in Iran has been, um, put under an extreme amount of stress by IRGC, by regime's forces, right? So they need to feel unsafe. They're making people's lives unsafe, so they mm. need to feel this themselves. They need to feel the pressure. So like, mm. um, 
maybe you're not one, maybe whoever's saying that, maybe they're not one of the people who are feeling the pressure from the government, but a lot of Iranian civilians are. And now, finally, some of the people who are putting this pressure on Iranian civilians, now they're feel, they are being made to feel the same level of stress. They, they're making P Iranian people have to wa watch over their shoulders. How about you feel that for a change? So, yeah, that's my okay. Answer. So, and then I'll oh, very quickly pick your brain about this. What do you think are the potential consequences or reactions to this? Well, okay, so this is very unpredictable. But if yeah. history, if recent history is anything to use, Iran, the regime is going to come and be like, we will retaliate, we will crush our enemies, they will be made to feel you know our wrath and we will like turn them into ashes and all, a lot of like empty talk and then pff, nothing that nothing significant and yeah you know the regime something for the regime supporters to come and like yes we showed them and the anti-regime people to be like you didn't actually do anything uh one thing they might do is they might start bombing um the kurdish part of iraq as a retaliation um which is again not israel just a reminder that but that's what they they did they, they will bomb a place that is associated with cooperating with israel but not israel itself mm -hmm. as a way to show and, and it's they did they just pick it's, it's amazing because the kurdish part of iraq because iraq is unstable uh, you know doesn't have enough ways to defend itself against iran's aggressions right now they just keep they just choose the weakest um group or part of and somewhere close to them that is affiliated with cooperating with israel and they just and just go at them they're like okay here's our here's our reaction but yeah you have a picture to show well this whole situation because gossam who our dear friend uh he he's saying go go musad as someone in iran <laughs> And yeah, yeah. it just reminded me of this. So this was a, um, someone flew the Israeli flag with a sign below it that said, thank you, Mossad, over a highway in Tehran a few years ago when Mossad assassinated um, Iran's top nuclear scientist. Um, and so, yeah, and Qasem's comment just reminded me of a, of a thank you, Mossad moment. That's a very risky to think, guys. This is in Tehran. That's crazy. No, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's worse than blasphemy based on Iranian standards. So, yeah. So the whoever did that was taking a huge risk to go over. Like a, this is a um, pedestrian bridge over, you know, over the street. So cars go under it, and he just walked over and put the Israel's flag up there and saying, thank you, Mossad. So I appreciate Thank you, Mossad, for taking out um, government, you know, military bases and stuff. So, yeah. Or, or actually, that this was in response to taking out uh, Fakhrizadeh, right? The yep. Iranian nuclear. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, yeah. I mean, I agree with that. I, I, Mossad is right now taking the cost of saving the planet from another rogue country going nuclear. So, I mean, my understanding is that the United States also helped with this. But again, if it wasn't Israel, there is literally no other country that is trying to stop Iran, the Islamic Republic, from going full on nuclear. And the, yeah. Israel is right. It's so unfortunate that, you know, Israel, we have to separate different parts of Israel from each other because I don't want to thank Israel's government. Israel's government is a, like a far right government right now so i don't know what to do but like our, and this is our, the first attack we saw under this government yeah yeah so we we are like we're like begging fascists to stop other fascists to, to stop bigger fascists so like this is this is, this is what we just what we have to deal with anyways i just this is why i don't thank israel right now i thank Mossad because <laughs> I, I don't i don't feel comfortable thanking israel for anything these days, given the current government. Oh, yeah. And we're going to talk about that today, actually. Oh, really? God damn. Oh, yeah. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free.
too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese gods, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.